welcome to the Heart of Dating podcast. Hey, it's Kate. I'm so glad you could join us this week as we try to entangle the ever so ambiguous world of dating as a Christian. Over here on Heart of Dating, we get real as we answer some tough questions and uncover transformative ways to approach Christian dating. Oh, and you better believe we have some laughs along the way, because last time I checked, the struggle is hashtag real. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's get to the heart of the matter. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Heart of Dating podcast. I'm your host, Kate Warman. And as always, I'm so excited that you are tuning in today. Hey guys, so we are in the middle of a series. Today is the third episode in a series we are doing on masculine and feminine energy and how those dynamics show up in dating relationships. So the first week we talked about the overall energetics of dating. What is it? Is it biblical? How does this all play out? And then last week we talked about masculine and what is the masculine? What did God design for that to be? How do we both have masculine within us, both as male and female, but how do we balance that in a dating relationship? And today we're talking about the feminine. We're talking about how to manage and express feminine energy in a dating relationship. I have to be really honest that this work has transformed my dating life. You guys, it seriously have. It has been so transformative. And that's why I decided to bring on my incredible friend, Rachel Cheryl, to do a series on this topic. So Rachel Cheryl is a certified dating and relationship coach and the host of the True Feminine Podcast. She coaches thousands of women and specializes in the concept of masculine versus feminine energy. Rachel primarily teaches women how to speak to men in a way that draws them in and inspires commitment. She believes there's an art to speaking to men that can be magical and magnetic and loves teaching it. I love Rachel. She knows what she's doing and she is an amazing Christian woman. So today we're talking about how to lean back into your feminine in a society that is very masculine in nature, where women are told, hey, to get ahead and work, you have to act like a man, think like a man, behave like a man. And so in a work setting, all of us women have become incredibly masculine. But when we come to a date, that is not what a man wants to feel on the other side. He doesn't want to feel that intense, moving, doing energy. He loves and is drawn into our softness, our vulnerability, um, the way we speak gently, um, the way we share our needs and our beautiful feelings. And so today we're talking way more about that. On a side note, I wanna tell you guys that if you didn't know, we have an incredible Facebook community. If you are looking to connect with singles that are in your stage of life, and if you're even looking for another person, okay, a man or a woman, if you're looking to match and meet and mingle with some other people, our Heart of Dating Facebook community has over 9,000 members, super active community of people doing life together and meeting up. I love the summertime because every summer, our Heart of Dating family connects in different cities across the US and even internationally, and it is so much fun. And all of those people met in our Heart of Dating Facebook community. We also have had so many couples meet and now are in relationships and some even married from meeting from our Facebook community. So if you want to join our Facebook community, if you have questions, if you just need community, you want to meet other singles, you can go to facebook.com forward slash heart of dating. That's facebook.com forward slash heart of dating. But in the process, make sure that when you request to join, you agree to all of our terms and conditions. That's super important because in order to be able to run a group of that size, we do have some rules in place to make sure it's a safe place for everyone who attends. Okay, guys, that's it for right now. Let's get into the episode with Rachel Cheryl. Rachel Cheryl, we're back for the third time together. Welcome to Heart of Dating. Hey, girl. So glad to be here. Ready to keep going. <laughs> Continuing this conversation, it just makes me like, even though, I mean, you know this information far better than I do, but even though I have personally studied it and been practicing it now for a few years, I love that you said this maybe in the last episode, but we are always learning and growing. And there's so much layers, like no matter how much we learn, no matter how much we've been to therapy, no matter how much like people listening are like, some people may already understand these concepts. Like there's always new things to learn and to understand about us 
about ourselves and how we're showing up because we are so intricately layered. So these past few episodes have also personally for me, I've been like, oh my gosh, have I been doing that with JJ? Like just thinking about it, like, (laughs) cause it's like, it's just the same concept of like, I'm not a therapist, but like the same concept of a therapist needs their own therapist, right? They can teach things and they know it, but then practically like they're always discovering new things for themselves. And so that is how I feel with everything I teach in dating. I'm like, oh yeah, I could talk about it and teach you it all day long. And then, oh, doing it for myself. Sometimes I need a new, I need to to be, I need a little heart check or a little reminder or to dive into a new area. So today we, so first episode, we talked about the energetics of dating, the thing that is barely talked about in the church. It's not woo-woo-y. It's totally a part of science and how God wired us as man and woman. We have a feminine nature and a masculine nature. And both of us, both feminine, both male and female have both. They, we have both within us. It's about finding that beautiful balance. And last episode, you talked about the dance, finding it it's like a waltz, you know, dance between the masculine and feminine, specifically in love and in dating. And so last week we talked about the masculine. We talked about what masculine looks like. We talked about how so often the masculine is the dominant energy in society. And right now, for both men and women. Women show up in their masculine so often. And I found personally, that's why a lot of my dating relationships were not working out as I desired because I truly was the girl boss all day long and then was still functioning that exact way in relationships. And so today we're going to go deeper on the feminine. Um, And what you do is called the true feminine. So will you tell people just briefly um, about what you do with the true feminine? (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So hi again, back again. Um, Yeah. For those who are new, my name is Rachel Cheryl and I run the brands called the true feminine. It's my podcast. It's um, all the social platforms. And um, really I just created it in, in hopes to kind of almost to really help women return back to their true femininity, because I think it is super lost and society has, um, you know, caused, caused and conditioned all of us to be extremely disconnected from ourselves and, um, extremely disconnected from, um, just, just polarity really. Right. They want everything to be the same, almost like an over equalized thing. And, um, you know, that just doesn't, that really defies the laws of nature and which are really God's laws and this is science. And so there's so many things that's hilarious with like dating and relationships. It's like, okay, I'm, I don't make this stuff up. Like it's, this is just how it works, you know, like, so you're going to be one or the other, you know, and it, you can either keep doing it how you're doing it. That's fine. Or you can understand how the world works how God designed things and, uh, work it to your advantage and play to the rhythms that you, uh, were born and called to really. So, um, yeah, so that's, I mean, there's so much to what I do, but y'all that's, that's the big thing. It's really helping women, um, return to their true femininity and, um, soften and lean into, um, what that is, what that means. And, and, and in return, what they get is, they, they become extremely wildly magnetic to men all around them and, um, and men can't explain it themselves. And so, um, if you can master the art of femininity, um, then you don't literally, there's nothing else to do, prove or worry about. And so, um, but it is an art. So (laughs) I also run a program, um, called the true feminine Academy and, Um, I'll be running that again soon. So um, that's where I really teach the embodiment and the nitty gritty details um, and very um, curated things to your personal walks and what you're doing. So if you're interested, I also run that program. Oh, guys, I could not be more of us like want you to go and check out Rachel's everything, her podcast, her Instagram, her program. I know some of our people are currently in her program and it's just incredible. So really encourage you guys to like glean from Rachel. People have DM me so much the last few months because 
we've connected a few times, you know, like in the social world and at the heart of dating conference, the last, you know, six, seven months. And people are like, wait, can you tell me about this feminine energy stuff again? Like I heard something about it and it was really interesting and I need to know more. And I'm just like, Rachel, Cheryl, just go to Rachel, just go to Rachel. And then I've also said, we're doing a podcast series on it because we have to, we have to touch on it. At least my hope is that you guys are, this is sparking something within you to want to learn even more and, and not feel so powerless. I feel like a lot of people feel powerless to what's happening in their dating lives. And they feel like, I don't even know what to do or where to go next. And the church as Christians are not giving you answers on what to do other than very, a lot of things that just aren't helping really in terms of dating. And this is a key that's never talked about in the church community from a Christian perspective. And I think this can really transform your life. And so feminine energy is what we're going to break down today. And ladies, I will say in tapping in to the feminine, it really is like, the ultimate key to unlocking what I think you're truly desiring. If you are a woman that is, that desires relationship and to be pursued by a man, because as I talked about last week, you can be the masculine and you can show up in dating, but you will more than likely repel a true masculine man or attract a more feminine type of man. And if that is not what you truly desire, if you should desire to be with a man a masculine man who embodies his true masculine, who is pursuing you, who is making you safe, all of these things, then you need to lean back into your feminine. That is the key. And that is the key that I was missing for so long in my life when it came to dating. And so, um, Rachel, I would love for you to talk a little bit about the lost art of feminine energy and, um, how we as women can, who are these girl bosses, maybe potentially all day long, how can we switch into and start leaning more into our feminine? Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, and I totally agree with you, Kate. Um, the reason I am so passionate about this and why I even started what I do is because my journey took me here and it was the exact same thing. I could not figure out like what I feel like I'm doing all the things I'm doing all this and that. And then like, Oh my gosh, someone introduced me to the concept of masculine and feminine energy. And I binged the living daylights out of it and like studied it. Like I, I, literally every waking hour that I wasn't having to do something else and upset, like I was obsessed. And I, then I implemented it and got, got married y'all. Okay. So, I mean, it was magical, Praise. literally magical. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, um, the lost art, yeah, the lost art of feminine energy. Well, first of all, let's just talk about what, what is the feminine energy side? So, I mean, I mentioned this in the past ones, but feminine energy is all body. I just want you girls to think body. I want you to think body space. I want you to think heart space. I want you to think even feelings and emotions, not that those are the things that define you, but they are information for you. And so if you want to become a master, masterful communicator with men, You need to master the art of understanding what your body feels and what your heart is feeling and then literally speak that. Um, And so that's one thing. I mean, I could go on a whole podcast alone on that, but I won't. Um, And uh, it is the receiving side. It is the receiver. Okay. And I think this is super hard for women. I mean, the amount of women who are um, over-functioning and they're, fe- and they're masculine. So like if you're an over-functioner, meaning like you're an over-giver, like you give all the time and you've probably found a lot of virtue in that, a lot of, um, worth self-worth from over, from giving and over-giving. Um, well, I would like to say, I would like to present to you that there is a, uh, worth issue going on there. There's usually a deeper self-worth thing happening that, You actually don't feel like you're worthy of love. You don't feel that you're worthy of receiving until you out give and over give somebody to somebody. And I know that this is very much um, conditioned. We definitely got get preached this at church. And so this is another part of church um, where I think it's a little confusing. So Mm -hmm. do I, am I saying to never give? No, I'm not saying to never give. This is where everyone gets confused wait, so Rachel, I should never give. How do I never give? Right. And I go, no, it's not that you never give. It's that you give a little less and, or you give in response to what the man has given to you. Now I'm also referring to a romantic relationship here. 
Why? Because a man desires to be the hero in your life. He desires to be the hero in your story. How can a man be the hero in your life or in your story if you're always solving the problem, if you're always being the one to give, the one to take care of, the one to care give to the man? When you care give to a man, he no longer this is subconscious in him too. He cannot even see you as a lover, sexy, romantic woman. He just, it, it's lost. Okay. He sees you as a mother on a subconscious level. So the dynamic oh, wow. instantly shifts when you're the one who's giving and doing all of these things for this man and taking care of him and making him things and doing all of this. And it's like, what are you doing? Like paying for him and buying him this and buying him that. And it's like, okay, so that, who did that in his life? Who did that in his life? His mother for 18 years did that to him. So um, so you're perpetuating the uh, mama's boy in, in a man who is, uh, you know, who, who actually deep in his soul desires to rise up. But if you continue to be the mother role for him, he's not going to rise up. Okay. Why? Because humans will always take the path of least resistance. It's going to be our natural state of being. We're always going to choose the path of least resistance. This is why if you do give, you're going to attract oftentimes narcissist men and all these things. Let me rephrase that. If you overgive, overgive, okay? Yes. It's not about never giving. But did you know that there's not much that you have to give that the, the greatest gift you can give a man is your ability to show up with softness, your ability to receive from him, your ability to appreciate, show appreciation just say, oh my gosh, I really appreciate that. Man, you really have a way of making me feel really good. Like, thank you so much. You made me feel special. Guess what? When you let him know he made you feel special, he's the hero. His hero trigger goes off subconsciously. He's not aware of this, by the way, and the men listening, you're not aware of this, but that is oftentimes what happens, okay? Um, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm a freaking hero. Like, I love this. I wanna do more of this. Um, but if you are just, you're out giving him, listen, I tell girls this all the time. I say, listen, take all of your giving energy. Okay. That you want to dump on this man that you're doting over, take all of it and dump it in every other area of your life. Give to your mom, give to the charity, give to the church, do, give in every other area, but seriously chill with your man, just mm -hmm. lean it back. You can still be a giver. And guess what? He's not going to think you're selfish. Well, will he think I'm selfish? No. When he sees you giving to the whole world around him, he will be attracted to it. He's inspired by it. And he sees you as a very giving person. I will never, ever, ever, ever forget the moment where I was sitting there with my husband and we were dating and my husband, oh my gosh, like I was leaning back into my feminine the whole time and it was magical. And my husband was just like, he's give, give, give. He was loving it. And, um, and I just remember, uh, sitting there in, in my living room one day and I kind of said to him a little bashfully, I said, I kind of feel bad. Um, and he's like, why? And I was like, well, oh, because like, I feel like you're always giving to me and, I probably said it just like this too. And, um, and I, I just feel like I don't really give that much to you. And, uh, and, you know, I was, I was being very soft and everything, but it was, it was a moment, you know? And, uh, and he literally says to me, he goes, um, he goes, what? He's like, what, wait, what, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, I just feel like you're always giving to me what she was always giving to me serving, loving, giving, I mean, forget like anything, you know? And, uh, and, and I go, well, I just feel like you're always giving to me. And like, I just, I'm not, I don't do, I feel like I'm not doing anything. And he goes, what, what are you talking about? He goes, you give me everything. And girls literally not giving him anything. Okay. <laughs> and he says, he's like, you give me everything. You, you give me, you give me this. And he just like, just, he had no words, you guys, no words. He was just looking around the room and looking at me. And in that moment, I knew I was like, it's my femininity. It's my presence. My presence was the gift, my soft feminine being that just receives and appreciates and loves this man, not by what I'm giving, but what I'm receiving, how I'm receiving from him. 
and showing this appreciation. And he had no words for it. And he, but he was literally felt like I was giving him the world when I do nothing for him, you guys, nothing still to this day. And I'm sure people are not going to like guys might not like this, but I've never given my husband a massage ever. And, And I've been with him for four years. Uh, married going almost two years in September. And he massages me all the time, loves on me, does all the things for me. And I'm not saying that that's how you have to be. I mean, guys, if you do want a massage, you could ask, it's fine, but, um, or just go pay for one. Um, but anyways, I, I'm just saying that like, that's, that's the dynamic that we have. And, um, and he loves it. Like he Mm. loves to give. And my, my husband's a very healthy, masculine man. Um, I would say he's definitely, uh, always open to counseling all the things. So, I mean, he's, he's definitely in a healthy state and, um, but he loves to give to me and he feels oddly given to not by what I do for him by, but by my, my being around him. Girls, you, part of the feminine energy is you are a, a, a soft invitation. You are a, your beingness Mm. should be a sanctuary for a man. Your presence is the gift. Now, not your masculine presence. He's like, cool, cool, cool. I've been competing. I've been bossed around all day by my, at work. I've been managed, micromanaged, told what to do all day long. So the very last thing I want to do is open my door to my woman and her start yipping and telling me what I need to do, what I got to do, all these things. I don't want that. And I don't necessarily need her to sit here and kiss the ground I walk on. I just want to experience feminine energy, the opposite of masculine energy, because even the women I worked with were in their masculine zone. I want to experience her soft, sensual being that she is. And, um, and her slowness, her slow, her ability. So slow, slower energy is the feminine side girls. Um, so how do you slow yourself down? I mean, I mean, there's, this is hard to do, but there's lots yeah. of ways to do it. And, you know, some, sometimes it's bef- before, you know, you're going to go out with a man on a date before, you know, that you're going to see your man, um, whatever it is, um, take a whole dang hour, if not a couple hours of getting yourself in a slow vibration and a slow, I mean, moving your body slow, stretching. I mean, get yourself in it, make yourself feel good and sexy. Okay. Not for him and not because you're going to be out there going to sleep with him and do the things because I don't, I'm not, I'm not condoning that. You know, I, I am within boundaries, but anyway, that's, that's for you to figure out, but I am trying to help you girls understand that your sensuality, all of that, your slowness is the vibe that is the attraction factor. Okay. So how can I slow down, light the candle in your room, in your room, clean your room, sometimes cleaning my room and just making it this like very like nice atmosphere. I put on music on a little speaker. I had put like French cafe on sometimes I put all these different things because I'm creating an atmosphere. Um, you know, I, I put on the cute thing or the thing that makes me, me feel good. So it's not about making him feel good. It's never about making him feel good. When you can make yourself feel good, the man is attracted to you and he desires to make you feel good as well. Times 10. Yes. But the issue is, is that all of us come, uh, how do I, how do I make him feel good? How do I do all these things? I'm like, well, you're like being a mom right now. Like, what are you doing? Like, he's a grown man. Treat him as such. Um, and you treat him as such by just leaning back and just being in your own little world in his presence, not proving, not convincing, not trying to uh, perform for this person. Yep. But performing for yourself, it's all actually feminine energy is all about putting the focus on yourself. That is extremely counterintuitive, very counter church culture. I know that freaks everybody out. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to be selfish. And I'm like, that's exactly what I'm telling you. (laughs) No, but, but not really because I'm not, I'm not into like selfish narcissism. So I definitely, definitely make that distinction. It's not a narcissistic selfishness. It's a, I actually care for my being and I'm in tune with my being and I love myself in the most tender 
caring, almost motherly way towards yourself. I embrace myself. I, I love who I am. And when you love who you are, guess what? The whole world around you will see you the way that you see yourself. So how do you see yourself? Oh, I'm a boss. I freaking take names. I'm doing the thing. I'm doing the thing. I'm doing, oh, that's cool. That is not what impresses a man straight. Hands down, a man is not impressed. He's not like, oh, I'm, wow. I mean, he, now uh, I would say a, probably an unhealthy masculine might, you know, a narcissist would probably definitely be attracted to it because he's like into like, you know, gaining fame and gaining name and things like that. Yep. But a healthy masculine is going to not be enamored by that. That's just not going to be what turns and them on. Not they mom. don't want a business partner. That's a thing I found for myself, girl. Like they're not looking for a business partner. Like I've realized that I'm like, oh, I've been with guys where I'm like, I'm showing them all my accolades. I've done this, how impressive, blah, blah, blah. And they're also impressive because they've done X, Y, Z too. And they're like, we're connecting on it over our dinner or whatever, because we're talking about it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, uh, they're not interested in me. Why is that? Because they don't want a business partner. <laughs> because you became his equal. There's equal and there's mm. not opposites. Mm -hmm. You have to scientifically. This is why I think it is hilarious watching people online, like just in our world today, just trying so hard to defy every law of nature. <laughs> it's like <laughs> the craziest thing to me. I'm like, okay, go ahead. Um, see how that works out. Um, it's just not, we were not meant to be equal. We're different. And why do we not embrace those differences? And it, it's not a demeaning thing, but like, there's almost over equality thing going on now. And I'm like, no, a man will never be attracted to you. If you are his equal, like equal energetically. And, and, you know, the impressive the thing that impresses him is just not that you match him. You matching him is dull. It's boring. It's like, it's like, ew, okay, okay. I'm the same thing. I'm, al I'm already filled with that same energy. I'm looking for something different. So girls are kind yes. of mysterious to a man. I'm like, how about this? Embrace your femininity to the nth degree. Like, like release the masculine energy or leave it at the door and soften up to, to as much as you can and slow your energy down and get rid of the proving and the convincing and, and this hard charge vibe that you're giving. It's just, it's literally, it, it's just not going to work in your favor. Okay. It's so, uh, you, you might get him, you might get him feminine man. You won't like him. Usually that's how it goes. You'll end up not being attracted to him. So the attraction factor just doesn't work. And this is literally the laws of nature. So you must have two opposites in order for it to come together. Otherwise it will always repel. I watch girls all the time online and I'm just like masculine. I, I know, I know exactly why a girl's single most of the time, just by even hearing her talk. I'm like masculine energy, masculine energy, masculine energy at a 95 out of, out of a hundred. Um, <laughs> and she has no idea. And that girl is like, if she does not switch out of that, she will be single forever. Okay, my dudes, where are you at? Did you know that Heart of Dating has an in-house dating program? We sure do. It's called Drop the Hanky, which is a brand new way to date with joy and integrity and for the guys, it's free to join. It's free to join because you don't have a program like we do for the ladies. But let me tell you guys why this is awesome for you. We created the Drop the Hanky program to grow in dating confidence and to allow you to put yourself out there even if you have little or no prior dating experience. It's a totally low pressure way to meet hundreds of quality Christian women and who knows, maybe go on a few dates. And again, it's free for the guys. All you have to do is submit a one minute personality video. You can do that in two ways. You can film it yourself, preferably horizontally, and you can send it to info at hodpodcast.com. Or you can set up a free meeting with our in-house video coach to actually help you create the video in less than 15 minutes. The video only needs to be one minute long. It's so easy. That's literally all you have to do. And then we launch new guys on the platform the beginning of every single month. 
There's other fun perks. You can join our men's community through our Drop the Hanky program. We sometimes have some speed dating events. There's other fun perks for the guys as well. But if you are actively wanting to date right now and you want to have a filter of knowing that there are quality, good Christian single women, join our Drop the Hanky program. The women have to apply and be admitted in order to even be a part of the program so they've already been filtered. You can go to heartofdating.com forward slash DTH dash guys. That's heartofdating.com slash DTH dash guys to find out more. Hey guys, real quick, want to pop in here with one more amazing sponsor for today's episode, my favorite, Faithful Counseling. If you're looking for a counselor, if you have never gone to therapy before, if you just need something that's more affordable and Christian-based, check out Faithful Counseling. We have been partnering with them for years now and hundreds of people on Heart of Dating have used the service, including myself, and love the service. Also, for your first month, you get 10% off, which is incredible. It's a super easy process. All you have to do is go and fill out a form, and then you're connected with the therapist in about one day. It's super, super easy. You can make virtual appointments. You can text with your therapist. There's so many different options. So to get that 10% off, you can go to faithfulcounseling.com forward slash heart of dating. That's faithfulcounseling.com forward slash heart of dating to get 10% off your first month. The important thing on what you're saying that was at least for me as the woman that you're talking about, like that we're referring to right now, is like when I was showing up in my proving energy, my boss girl energy, all those things, I was, I dressed quote unquote, very feminine. Let's say it put quote unquote makeup. I smelled good. I looked good. I was very feminine in the way I looked. I was pretty, if you want to say quote unquote. And so it's not about like what you look like in that way. It's not about like your, the model status. It's not about dressing really feminine though. Sure. If that makes you feel great and sensual and feel great in your body, great. But you can show up like that, look like that, but your energy is complete opposite. And the guy is still not into you. Like ladies who feel like, oh man, like guys aren't attracted to me. Well, maybe it has nothing to do with the way you look. Maybe it has everything to do with your, the energy you're putting out there, whether you're not confident in yourself, whether you're not putting out, you're not stepping into your feminine. Like it has, I think it, it just really has so much more to do with that than like your perceived quote unquote attractiveness in, in that way. Oh, hundred, 1000. I mean, I think we even said that last week too, just about how like it's less to do with your appearance. And, um, you know, but, but I mean, and that's why I even say like, there's so many times guys are like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I just, I'm just not feeling it. And I'm like, we're not feeling it because there's literally nothing to feel like there's no heart to even connect with because mm-hmm. you've become his little equal. You've become, you've met him with masculine energy. your energies beca- are the same and the same repels. Right. And that's, that's just how it goes. Like I, it's just, it just is what it is. I don't make this up. Right. So, I mean, now you may be able to attract men, but they might be a, uh, they might be more feminine. Right. And so it's not that you're not going to attract, uh, somebody at all, but you're going to attract the opposite energy that you're in. That's just, so it's, and this is why energy and the energetics of dating are so important. And, um, and so it's just interesting. And so, you know, I mean, you're good. It's just, you're always going to draw in the opposite energetically, let me say, (laughs) because I would, I would say something totally different. Like when it comes to your healing journey, like you're going to attract what's happening on the inside. Anyway, it's just, it's super, super, super important, um, to really grasp this and understand this, but it's, it's not your doing this. It's your being this. That is the feminine, the feminine. Oh, and the feminine trust, the feminine trust that the man is going to, uh, get things done. She trusts that he's going to solve the problem. This is a huge one. Ooh, the, the, the release of taking control over the situation is my, the bane of my existence, girl, the bane of my freaking existence is this right here. And JJ said, amen. Okay. (laughs) Amen. Okay. (laughs) Okay. No, but it's true. It's trusting is massive. You want to draw in a masculine man. You want your man to 
rise or whatever it is, or you want a man to come to, just trust. There's three parts of trusting here. You need to trust the man that he's going to rise up and do what he needs to do. That he's going to figure it out. He's going to solve the problem. He's going to, you know, get, you know, fight the battle, do whatever the thing is. Okay. Um, he needs to do. And then um, you're going to, uh, you're going to trust that he will make something happen. So you don't need to prematurely try to, that is what happens all the time. I could just, couldn't wait. I'm like, you need to learn to wait that man out. I mean, wait him out. Because a man, I've heard um, other coaches say this, no matter how shy a man is, it doesn't matter. Uh, he will, when he wants something, he typically, his um, in instinctive, almost animal nature will go out to get it. So stop, stop, you know, just stop, just stop ladies. Anyway, but, um, and then uh, trust that he will rise up, trust that he'll figure it out. Number one, by the way, when you trust a man, it's, it's, it's extremely attractive to him that you trust him. So that's another magnetic piece. He's like, Ooh, I feel like a freaking man. I have a hero side's coming out again. She trusts me. Um, you want a man to be turned off, tell him you don't trust him, but more than not, more than telling him you, we oftentimes demonstrate it wildly, uh, in the most subtle ways that we don't trust him. And we demonstrate that by taking control, by like stepping in, by trying to make it happen faster, all those things. And the guy feels disrespected. He feels demeaned. He feels like, oh, well, I don't really want to be with this person who doesn't trust that I'm going to figure things out for us. I'm just turned off now. He's turned off. Okay. Trusting yourself. Wow. I could go on for probably 50 podcasts about this. And I do this, this is like the premise of my whole program really is trusting yourself. I mean, that is a huge, huge disconnect. Trusting that you're enough, that I don't need to prove, I don't need to make things happen. I'm trusting that everything is always working out for me. Everything's always working out. It's very vague, it's general, but it's true. Everything is all, I just trust that no matter what, everything's always working out for me. Everything just falls into place at the right time for me. And I don't need to take charge and make it all work and make it happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then trust the process. Okay. Trust the process, you know, just trust that everything. Yeah. Trust, trust yourself, trust, trust the man, trust yourself and trust that everything's working out for you. Those three, those three things. Um, that is extremely magnetic uh, and magnetic energy because there's no control. There's no grip and control is desperateness. Okay. That's where the yes. desperate uh, vibe comes in. And, um, and men listening, I would say this to you, uh, you might want to take that, be tempted to take the path of least resistance and think, Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm just going to sit back and trust that everything's going to happen. <laughs> then you're not really operating in your most uh, masculine state, the way that you were designed. You're the sperm here, buddies. You're the sperm. You guys got to get out there, right? You got to take the swim. You got to take the swim to the egg. You know what I'm saying? You got to take the swim to the girls. So um, that's, that kind of plays out differently. But, you know, here's the thing, women, if you are able to fully trust this man, then there now becomes space on an energetic level for a man to come towards you. When you grip control, your, your energy is leaning forward. It's leaning forward and which pushes the man back or could cause combativeness, but it typically just pushes him back and pushes him away. So, um, when you lean, when you hold yourself grounded or you lean back now, look, there's space. I'm showing a, a hand thing, but there's now space for him to come towards you, which ultimately most women listening to this desire for a man to pursue her, to come towards her. And, uh, but he's not going to come towards you if you're the one chasing after him, uh, because chasing implies that you're, uh, running after something that's running away from you. So, um, you don't need to chase after this person. Uh, you are enough. And, you know, for those women, which is a lot of women who like literally like cannot even help themselves from the giving, I just need to give, I want to do these things. I want, here's the thing. If you want to, I had a girl ask me this a long time ago. She said, uh, Rachel, she got, you're my feminine energy guru. She said, listen, I really, I really want to bake the zucchini bread for, you know, the, this guy I'm dating. Um, can I do that? Is that, is that, is that feminine or is that masculine? She said, and I said to her, I said, listen, let me tell you something. If you just 
for the genuine sake of it, want to make zucchini bread because you like, you enjoy baking, you enjoy making it. And I'm just the pure goodness of your heart. You just feel like making up some zucchini bread. By goodness, make him some zucchini bread and hand it to him. Now, the difference is, is I'm going to make him this so maybe he'll like me more. I'm going to make him this to get him to like me more or that that's the energy shift that's different, right? I'm just going to make this with no strings attached, like expecting zero from him. And so a great question to always ask yourselves is when you want to give, I want you to ask yourself, what am I hoping will happen? No. What is it that I'm hoping will happen? And try to identify, am I hoping that by doing this for him or giving this, that he's going to like me more? Um, this definitely goes with sex a lot, you know, or sexual things. Why didn't I do that? Am I doing this because I want, he's going to want me more. Is that why I'm doing this? Well, then you're out of whack. You're out of your alignment. Okay. Oh yeah. And so, um, you know, versus like, no, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to make him this just because I really just genuinely thought of it. And I don't care for anything in return from him whatsoever. If he gave me nothing in return, I don't care. I'm just going to give this to him. So it's a big difference. Um, and, uh, you know, and I just really want to challenge you if you are somebody who overgives and over functions and especially relationships, um, I would, uh, challenge you or encourage you to, check in with into your self-worth radar because a lot of the reasons we want to give or overgive is because we literally have been conditioned to think that in order for me to be worthy of receiving something, I must give first. I must, um, I must give out, give over, give. If a man gives you something and you feel like I should give him something back because I feel bad because he gave to me. No, you're not receiving. You're not receiving well. Receiving is, thank you so much. I love that you did this. And with no feeling that I need to give you anything back. Yep, now, that's so the good. time will come where you feel like giving him something out of your own pureness of heart, but not, it, not because they said it to you or they did something to you. Oh, well, he told me I was beautiful. So I told him he was handsome. You didn't have to do that. He yep, told me I love it. you. So I said, I love you back. You didn't have to, I still to this day, my husband will be like, I love you, babe. And I'll go. Thank you. I just said, thank you. And then I wait, I wait, I pause. And then I go, love you too. But I, I, but I have a long pause in the thank you. And, uh, and because I'm receiving, I'm receiving that he loves me. Wow, I don't need to, good. I don't need to jump back. Love you too. You know, I don't, I'm taking my time. I'm on the, I'm slow. I'm slow down. I'm in slow zone, flow zone over here. And I'm, I'm, I'm relishing. And the fact that you just told me you loved me, I am, I'm eating that up for a a moment here. I'm just like, thank you. God, I'm so freaking worthy of love. (laughs) Like I'm so, this is my moment here, even though it happens every day, I'm going to, I'm going to cherish it and receive it. And I'm thanking him for loving me for saying that. Thank you. I love you too. That's it. There's no rush. So if you find yourself in a rush, there is no rush. Rushing is masculine um, because it's that faster pace. It's the Mm. forward leaning. And so, um, you know, I I need to lean back. I need to just receive how you receive is just simply saying thank you. And, you know, you're worthy of receiving love, right? And a man is always going to feel the most loved by your ability to receive from what he's giving to you. He feels accomplished. He feels like a hero. He feels like, I have the ability to win with this person. I have the ability to make this person feel good, feel special. And even sexually, and everyone listening will understand this, but men are, well, I would say good men, maybe not a narcissist, I don't know, but um, their deepest desire, the way that God designed the man is to make you feel safe, to make you feel cherished. Um, and to make you feel good. Hello, sexually. Um, even when you're having sex, the man is like, uh, you know, what makes me the most turned on is when you're turned, when I have the ability to turn you on, mm. I am turned on by that. So, mm-hmm. so do you see, like, it's just in the name, in their nature, a lot of times for this. And so, um, think about that. That's on, I always bring the sexual level, but everything kind of flows from that point. So a man also feels like he is in his prime zone. Like he's like winning the freaking game. If this were a game, when, when he gives to you and you're like, thank you, I love that. And then you're not 
competing with him to give him more and outgive him. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm competing with everybody at work. I just want to love her. Oh, wow. I, That's good. I, I just, you know, and I think we, we forget that a lot of times. And so I know that that word has probably some negative connotations to it, but I actually really like it because I think that we, uh, we're taking all these other positions that are not this romantic position with our men, um, because it's what we're used to. And it's what we think that we have to do in order to gain love. And it's actually literally not working and it's not, it's not the move. Okay. The move is I'm never going to forget that I am my husband's lover and he's my lover and we are romantic partners. And in order for me to continue to stay in a romantic zone, I am not stepping in to be his mom ever, 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 ever. I will never forget. I was dating my husband and I was at his house, uh, at his mom's house. And my husband was like tired and my husband's a firefighter. Anyway, he was like on the couch and, you know, they work like very long hours and days sometimes. And anyway, he was on the couch, a little tired. And, uh, and he's like, you know, I don't know what happened, but all I remember was I was like, oh yeah, Danny's kind of tired. And, and then, um, and his mom and sister instantly were like, oh, oh, it's, uh, just stay there. Oh, do you want me to get you something? Do you need anything? Oh, honey. Oh, what, oh, what do you need? And they were just like all in this like give and serve mode to him. And I said, absolutely nothing. I was like, I will not be that to my man. No freaking way. I know. I trust he's a grown man and he can handle himself. I'm not his servant. I am not his mom. I'm not his manager. I'm not his nurse and caretaker. Uh, no. Now I will be, if the time comes in my long-term marriage and partnership, of course, yes, there's that kind that will, that will evolve into that, but you know, I'm dating him. And do you know, my husband, I watched him get annoyed by his mom and sister. He's like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Guys, I'm good. And I thought to myself, yeah, because he's a masculine man who doesn't want to be babied. He doesn't want to sit there and be, it's patronizing a little bit to him. And I didn't say a peep. And I almost thought to myself, they probably think it's weird that I'm not jumping to care for him. Yep. But I wasn't. And, And I've always pulled my ground. And I'm super soft and loving to my husband, by the way, people listening. So I, don't, I hope I'm not coming off as a B or whatever, or like, it sounds like I don't ever, but the magic isn't there. It's not in being his mom. It is in being my dynamic, in tune, feminine uh, being. My beautiful feminine essence is the thing. My ability to stay in lover zone and not move lover seductress zone which by the way, the seductress in movies, what does she do? She's moving very slow. She's making eye contact. She's usually leaned back and she's drawing a man in. Okay. It's not mm-hmm. by all that she's doing. It's not her boss babeness. It's just her sitting there, you know? And so, um, I'm staying in that zone for my man and he shows up as the masculine in my life. And was he, as he ever offended that I'm not serving him? No. And if a man is offended that you're not serving him, I really question his level of narcissism on the scale because narcissists always are looking for supply to be served. They, they, they want to be served. So they will look for the codependent, you know, who's like, Oh, let me serve you. So be careful of that. That's interesting. Yes. And, And that's an entirely different episode. Maybe we can do another one on that because I think that needs to be distinguished because we get confused by that. Oh, what he likes, but he likes when I do all these things for him. Okay. Mm. Well, I want to know, how do you feel? Do you feel super loved? Well, yeah, I do sometimes. Well, then, and then sometimes he doesn't love me and sometimes he ignores me. And I'm like, oh, interesting. I'm like, stop serving that person and see what, what's, what he's made of, what he's made of. Is he there? What does he do? Does he hold his own? Is he a real man? Who's like, Hey, I have the ability to actually care for myself and this beautiful, feminine, amazing, dynamic, wonderful woman. Or is he like, eh, I'll take all the servitude I can get from everybody else around me. Um, And yeah, I'll, I'll give just enough praise to the girl so that she keeps coming back for more, but she's actually starving for love. And so she keeps performing more and more and more. So no, if you're performing and a guy stays around, it's usually because he's a narcissist. 
Um, so and if that, if you're a man listening to this and you're like, what? I like eating surf. I would do some digging. I would say, where inside of me am I, do I need to heal? Where inside of me do I need to find a little wholeness um, to rise, to be the most healthy masculine so that I know how to actually love and hold space for me and love and hold space for another being. Rachel, this has been amazing. We went over the energetics of dating, the masculine energy. This week we went over the feminine energy and you guys, this is just like, I did, I didn't even really say that much in some of these episodes because I just wanted Rachel to talk and I wanted you guys to glean from what she is saying and what she is sharing with us. And like, again, this has been such a powerful tool personally in my life. I want to encourage you guys to to not let this be the only time you ever hear this information, if any of it is resonating with you and to not be freaked out by energy because it is literally, we are energetic beings. It just, we are made up of lots of particles that we are energetic beings. It just is how we were designed. It doesn't have to be scary. It is how God designed us and God designed us beautifully, uniquely, and differently male and female, differently, different natures, different energies and different makeups. And it's a beautiful, beautiful design. And so how do we come back to that true being that God created and intended as, as he designed in his perfect design. And so Rachel girl, thank you so much for sharing over the last few episodes. I just adore you. I want everyone to go connect with you and just thank you for being such a gift to so many women and men, at least through this podcast, maybe more men went through what you do one day, but thank you. Thank you for what you do. <laughs> oh, I love you, Kate. You're so sweet. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. And, um, we'll talk soon. Okay, girl. I love you. Thank you so much. The Heart of Dating podcast is created by Kate Warman. It is a part of the Converge podcast network. Our incredible editor is the one and only Scott Caro. Our theme music was developed by the amazing Christian Ledoux. Special shout out to Anjali Maga and Gabriella Asperu who make this show possible each week and help to keep me sane. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, or if you've never written us a review or ranked us on iTunes, we'd encourage you to do so because it helps us so much to get this podcast into more people's ears. We launch our podcast each and every week on Wednesday. So we'll see you next week. This show is part of the Converge Podcast Network. 